is going on everyone? So in this week's video, we're gonna talk about something pretty important. So we're gonna talk about the Nature First Alliance and its seven principles, as well as some other stuff that's been kind of going on lately when it comes to landscape photography and the outdoor community and social media and everything kind of along those lines. Uh, so the sort of the theme overall of this video is that we all have an impact on the places that we visit. And also we can all make a difference. And big changes oftentimes happen a little bit at a time. It's those small decisions that kind of add up that lead to sort of larger amounts of change, whether it's for the better or for the worse. But the important thing to know is that we all play a part in this and we all can make things hopefully turn out for the better. So I'm gonna start with the story of the Lake Elsinore poppy bloom this year. So uh, right along the 15 freeway in Lake Elsinore, there are these hills that kind of the freeway cuts through. And uh, we had a huge amount of rain this year in Southern California. And the poppies grew like crazy on those hills. And I mean, it's impossible to miss if you're driving on the 15 through that area because the hills literally turned orange. It was pretty impressive. And you know, it was an absolutely amazing scenery and it attracted a lot of attention. A lot of people would uh, kind of stop and go and want to hike through the poppies. And there's some trails through there as well. Uh, and there was some bad behavior that kind of made the news quite a bit as far as people stopping on the side of the freeway, parking, getting out and hiking through the fields, which is horrible. Um, the whole social media influencer thing as well. But, you know, it's for good reason that people were amazed by this because it was, it was a pretty big spectacle. And on some of the weekends, there were 100,000 people a day visiting some of these areas. So it's more than the infrastructure could handle. And it led to a lot of frustration for the people and overcrowding and a lot of stuff that kind of went with it. Uh, there was also a lot of sort of shaming. There still has been a lot of sort of shaming in social media about some of the people that were going there and kind of walking in the flowers and all that. And obviously that's not a good thing. You don't want to, you know, go through the and trample all the flowers, but I think that got a lot of attention. Um, but ultimately I think a lot of the damage that happened there where people were going off trail, walking through the flowers, all that, I don't think it was really the result of the people just blatantly, you know, rolling through the flowers and all kinds of stuff like that. I think it was damage that happened just a little bit at a time, where a person's walking along a trail, they kind of step right to the edge of the trail, have their picture taken there, and then they might trample the flowers a tiny little bit, maybe a few inches or so into it, and then the next person comes, and the next person comes. So it's a little bit at a time, but these decisions add up to the point where eventually these trails are worn through the flowers and people see the trails and say, hey, people have already been here before, I should go here as well. And it's this gradual effect that it can have on the environment, oftentimes from people with good intentions, though of course there are the troublemakers as well. But when you have that many people visiting a small area that is very fragile, you're gonna have a very big impact on that area. And in many ways, this is kind of like a microcosm for what happens to a lot of the areas that we as landscape photographers really do enjoy, especially the areas that are a bit more fragile, areas that have a lot of moss that is growing that will be killed off as people walk over rocks or uh, vegetation on hillsides that kind of get worn down with time and eventually changes areas for the worse because you might not have 100,000 people a day visiting some of these landscape locations, but if you have you know, 100 people a day you know, over the course of a year, that's a lot of people. So you have the same sort of damage that happens in a lot of the places that we do know and we do love. Um, and in many ways, we're all responsible for it. Um, it's the decisions that we make as photographers and as visitors to these areas that will have an impact on it. So I wanna tell you a little story about an area that I visited. So it was this canyon I backpacked into in 2017. Uh, it was sort of off the grid sort of location. And, you know, I had to hike quite a ways to get into there and I stayed the night there for a few nights and really beautiful canyon, only ran into a handful of people when I was there. And there's this one tree that I wanted to photograph. It was this juniper tree. And there was a game trail that, uh, that deer had left. Um, and I was kind of following along that game trail. And there's this really nice looking juniper kind of growing on this rocky area. It was maybe, I don't know, 20 feet or so off the trail. And there was this 
sandy slope, there's very, very sparse vegeta vegetation, not a lot of stuff growing on it. And the way it works with my camera gear, uh, take off my backpack, pull all the individual cases out of it, and they kind of sprawl it down on the ground. I kind of left that back where the game trail is. And then I'd kind of walk up maybe about six or seven feet or so, my tripod set up there, and there's like this little bit of a hill that I'm kind of walking up. And again, not a lot of vegetation on it, but I'm careful not to like step on plants and stuff like that. I set up my camera, take the photo, but in the process I have to walk back and forth quite a few times. And I definitely disturbed the sand a little bit when I was there. I didn't think too much of it, um, tried to be as careful as I could. But when I returned to that same location a year later, I was actually pretty surprised to see that the area where I was walking, there was no plants growing. There was plants growing on either side. And the year that I visited, there definitely was not a lot of rain that year, so there wasn't a lot of uh, wildflowers and stuff that were blooming. Um, but the fact that I had disturbed that sandy soil means that the seeds kind of, maybe they were exposed to the wind, they blew away, but the fact that I was there actually had an impact. That was the impact of just one person in a canyon somewhere in Utah, and it left a trail that I could see you know, a year later. And I'll be revisiting that canyon again this year, and I really look forward to seeing how the area has changed. Hopefully it has recovered a bit. But it really does kind of bring awareness, at least a broad awareness to me, the fact that I as one person, even trying to be very careful with very good intentions, will have an impact on the environment. So the impact that we have on the environment, it could be beyond just a physical standpoint. We also have to be aware of the electronic footprint that we have, the social media impact that we have. You know, posting pictures from a particular area is going to have an impact on the area, especially if we, you know, geotag that area on Instagram, you know, say exactly where that photo is taken. Uh, it's even worse if people post GPS coordinates to areas that are very sensitive areas. Um, lately, I've been uh, tagging with the location tagging on Instagram. I've been tagging everything as planet Earth, just to be very general about it. So. I'd encourage you guys to do that as well. If you post a picture somewhere, just tag it planet Earth. I think that is one thing that we can do to kind of make a difference. Um, but there's been a lot of, there's been sort of growing um, sentiment where a lot of people are kind of seeing the same sort of thing. They're seeing that there is an impact that we're having as people are getting outdoors more and venturing into new areas and exploring new areas. And so there is a new alliance that's been formed called the Nature First Alliance. And basically it's a set of seven principles that kind of builds upon leave no trace, but kind of goes a step beyond that and takes into consideration the impact that we have uh, in kind of a bit of a broader scope. So what I want to do is I want to mention these seven different principles, talk about them a little bit, and then in the description down below you'll see a link to uh, Nature First where you can join it and you know see all the information that's on there. But the first principle is to Prioritize the well-being of nature over photography. So if you're out there somewhere taking photos and you see a scene that is really beautiful but know that you have to walk over a very fragile area to get to it, listen to that voice in the back of your head. If that voice tells you, probably not a good idea to go here, then don't. Maybe try to find a better way of getting there and if there's no way of getting there, don't worry about it. Just don't take the picture. Find something else where you can get to it a little bit better. So that, I think that's a really important thing. Photography is not the priority out there. It is really just the well-being of nature um, because all these little decisions that we do make, if it has a negative impact, then it will change the location for the worse. Uh, number two is educate yourself about the places you photograph. Um, that's, I think, one of the nice things about going to a lot of the same locations over and over again like I do, because I get to really know the areas. I kind of know the areas that are more fragile, the areas that are less fragile, the best ways to go about navigating certain areas. But if I were to go to a completely new location, which I'll be doing here pretty soon on my spring trip, um, I'm very hesitant at first because I want to make sure that I'm not doing something to that place that will leave a negative impact on it. So definitely you want to educate yourself about the places that you are photographing and kind of knowing etiquette and, and what's good for those areas. Number three is reflect on the possible impact of your actions. Um, and this kind of goes a little bit to the story of me kind of on that sandy slope taking the photos of that juniper tree. Um, and knowing that I did have an impact on that area and kind of 
with that now in mind, I'll be able to kind of use that on future trips and kind of know, you know, maybe some of those areas I probably shouldn't be going to because even one person will have an impact on it. So definitely good to think about that, but also think about it from the standpoint of, you know, tagging specific locations. You know, what are the, what's the impact of doing that and increased visitation going to some of these locations um, because of putting something out there on social media. And number four is use discretion if sharing locations. Um, there are certain areas that just can't handle the amount of people. And what happens is, is you have more and more people going there. It'll first of all have a negative impact on that location itself. But even if it's an area that can handle a lot of foot traffic, can, can, can handle a lot of people, the overall experience of the people visiting that location will be lessened. Imagine going to an area that is off in the middle of nowhere, beautiful area, and having it all to yourself and enjoying the experience being out there, enjoying being able to relate to your surroundings and relate to nature versus being shoulder to shoulder with 20 other photographers. It completely changes the balance of it. And having that many people at a location can sort of ruin it for the people, if not for the location itself. And that leads to permit processes and all sorts of other things that kind of goes along with that. So definitely use discretion of sharing locations. And I'd say, don't even tag things on Instagram. Just tag it as planet Earth. I think that's just a, a good safe move right there. And definitely don't post GPS locations to areas that are sensitive areas um, because they once the information's out there, you're not gonna get that information back. Uh, number five, know the rule, know and follow the rules and regulations of an area. This is really, really important. Um, knowing where you can and can't have campfires, knowing proximity of camping compared to water sources, everything kind of along those lines, uh, whether dogs are allowed, whether you can kayak in a particular lake, stuff along those lines. It's very important to know the rules and regulations because those are there for a reason. And yes, those rules do apply to you, they do apply to me, and so don't use it just as guidelines. They are the rules and they should be respected. Number six, always follow leave no trace principles and strive to leave places better than you found them. Now, you might notice the hat right here. So uh, you might wanna, if you guys don't already know Phil Monson, look him up. He's a really, uh, very talented photographer from Utah and uh, also a very talented graphic designer. And so he's had a very big movement lately on social media where he is striving to pick up trash, inspire people to pick up trash, leave places better than they found them. And that's one of the things that has inspired me to do that on my recent trip to uh, Zion this past fall, and just spend a day picking up trash. And it's actually a pretty interesting experience because you learn a lot from it. Um, but definitely read up on Leave No Trace. Um, and, and if you see things, pick them up. And, and as this might sound like a little bit of a plug, but uh, I'll, I'll link to, um, uh, to, to Phil Monson's store uh, down below where you can see his, his shirts and hats and everything. But simply buying a hat like this and putting it out there that that is kind of your thing, uh, you'll find yourself picking up more stuff than if you don't. So it actually does make a little bit of a difference there. And uh, finally, seven is actively promote and educate others about these principles. And I think that is where, um, at least my perspective has been to try to lead by example, um, to kind of show real world what it's all about. Um, and I'll be definitely doing a fair amount of that when I go on my backpacking trip and kind of showing some of the, the leave no trace stuff that I do when I'm out there. But, you know, picking up trash when you're out there um, and just, everything else kind of along those lines. Um, there's always been a little bit of a, well, with social media, there's there is the troublemakers out there that are just doing things for attention. But I, I think this is a good movement to kind of sway things the other way. I'm not a big fan of the whole, you know, public shaming thing because I don't think that necessarily is gonna be a good thing. But I definitely think leading by example is key. Uh, but definitely go to the Nature First website. The link is down below. Read through everything, take it all in. There is a little thing you can join in order to be listed on there and kind of take a little bit of a pledge, I guess you would say, in a way. But I want to thank everyone for watching and we'll see you around next week.